How's it going guys? My name is Zara and I am the person who you maybe um, learned about in the halftime show. Um, I started the Sloth Ironman Games five years ago and I'm so happy to see how it's evolved and um, how many Sloth fans that we've had over the years. I can certainly say that 2020 was our best year yet. It's truly a team effort. I would like to thank the entire Sloth team, my right hand woman, Mariana, and all the people who made this game uh, and this game series possible. And also, of course, you guys. You guys are the ones who made this an extremely fun, interactive, and successful um, week. And actually, Sloth Month, all of October, was all about sloths. So it was super, super exciting to see so many people from all over the globe get so excited. Root on Lala, Root on uh, Suso, Oatmeal, Eclipse, and Gaspar. Uh, we wanted to make the fifth year a little bit special, so we introduced a special fifth sloth, the first ever three-fingered sloth Eclipse. And we're so excited to reveal the uh, results of this year's games. Um, here by my side is the official referee. You guys might uh, recognize her from the games. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, yes, I'm Laura. Like Zara said, this year's referee. It was really fun. Um, I'm here at the Chicken Rescue Ranch because of an internship, and I really enjoy it. And it was, yeah, a lot of fun to be part of this amazing um, fundraiser. So thanks a lot. So Laura's going to be helping me out, give the awards to the sloths that we have eagerly waiting for you guys to see. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into it, and if you guys have any questions, please use the chat feature. I'm happy to answer them. Um, we have some amazing cameramen behind, the, behind our phones right now ready to ask those questions, so feel free to ask away. So here we have on our beautiful sloth structure, um, three of the uh, sloth contestants. First, I want to point out lovely, lovely Suso here. So Suso... Um, crawled away with 1,085 points. It was pretty impressive because he gathered $760 in donations. He took uh, second in the one meter dash and the hibiscus eat off. He also took the golden title for the strong sloth, but sadly was disqualified in the poop off. Uh, Suso, maybe because he performed so darn well, people didn't, re donate as much uh, to him as the other sloths because everybody loves an underdog and so um, Suso sadly got fifth place but did an amazing job and we're really really proud of this thunder child. <laughs> Do we have any questions about Suso or any Suso fans out there? Rooting for. Who me? Yeah on Instagram. Oh wow. From Broken Barbie. All right, Broken Barbie, I'm going to be honest, I do have quite a soft spot for oatmeal, and that's just because he comes from a seriously um, inspiring, incredible story. Uh, I relate oatmeal with a story of hope, and um, I was really excited to see a sloth that we weren't even sure was going to live compete in the Sloth Ironman Games. Eclipse, obviously, is a, is a fan favorite and super adorable, and all these sloths are super amazing. But I did have a, uh, I was kind of rooting for oatmeal, to be honest. Good question. And Charlie is asking, how old is Suso? How old is Suso? Do we have any answers out in the seven, crowd? Seven. Seven, seven months? months yeah. Suso is seven months. Great question. All right, let's move on to fourth place. Lala! Woo! Over here getting down with Gaspar, his, her best friend. I'll go over here. We have a, a lot of Suzo fans in the YouTube chat. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> Suzo! All right, if you guys want to come around here, you can see them munching together on some dirt. Oh, someone, someone pooped. <laughs> <laughs> the poop off. All right, so if Laura wants yes. to come in and give... <laughs> well, I'm not sure they're really interested right now, but we can... <laughs> There's well, someone guys. who asked, uh, Joseph Dadjali asked, uh, can you tell me a bit about the diet you, you feed them in captivity? Right now we're using... Sure, calories. actually, let's bring the vet on, on site over here and she can talk a little bit about that. Everybody say hello. This is Anna. She's our vet supervisor. You probably saw her in the halftime show. 
and she can talk to you a little bit about um, the salt diet. Um, well, we feed them <laughs> cooked vainicas, carrots, a uh, little bit of um, sweet potato. We also add a lot of leaves into their diets. Um, so, well, that's the diet we use for captivity, just to help them uh, gain a little bit of weight. We do eggs and, and dog food. But mainly when they're on this age, we try to give them a majority of leaves and flowers so they can start their natural diets right away. I also have a question for dearest Anna, and it is, why do they eat dirt or grass sometimes? Uh, they eat the dirt, not really the grass. Uh, the grass just happens to be on the way. Um, we are not quite sure. There's not a scientific explanation about it. People are saying, well, one of the theories is that they need, uh, they're lacking some minerals, so they go and eat the dirt. Someone else said that they use the dirt to help them digest. So there's not really um, a theory. We just know that wild slots tend to do this. They will come down, they poop, and they eat dirt. Um, part of like their behavior, but there's no really a scientific explanation as of yet. Thank you, Anna. All right, I'm gonna go in and jump in and talk about Lala. Lala was um, our fourth place uh, finalist. She finished with 1,148 points. Lala is known for the being the DQ queen. Uh, she got disqualified from the one meter dash, the hibiscus eat off and the poop off almost unheard of but she actually kind of pulled in a little bit for the strong soft challenge and took second place um all together everybody loves a bit of an underdog so people were rallying behind lala and she ended up raising 1048 dollars in on her behalf which allowed her to finish with 1148 points so sweet sweet lala ended up uh, surprising us a little bit. We thought for sure she was gonna finish last. Do you have any questions about Lala? We have a question about how do we choose the names for the sloths? That's a really good question. So sometimes we choose the names based off their personality. Sometimes our vet team or the sloth team just likes to be goofy and creative and think of uh, unique things uh, to call them. And other times we pick themes. So we'll pick like a Disney theme or um, Avengers or Star Wars, for example. And uh, we'll kind of go off of that theme and, and name the rest of the sloths that for, for a little while. That way uh, it's kind of fun also for the supporters and for the people taking care of them. Great question. All right, so as you can see, Lala and Gaspar are BFFs and uh, they are seriously inseparable. Um, so that's why you see them pretty much turning into one sloth. Gaspar finished in third place. Um, he did pretty darn well. He took first in the one meter dash. He DQ'd from the hibiscus eat off, which is almost unheard of because every sloth loves a bit of a hibiscus. Took, um, took third place in strong sloth and first place in the poop off. Um, altogether, Gaspar raised $945 totaling in 1,270 points. So that just means Gaspar was definitely sitting in third. Certainly we thought Eclipse because she finished a lot of uh, a lot in third place. We thought she might take it, but Gaspar snuck in there. Do we have any questions about uh, Gaspar, third place? Slothly. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. We got all of you guys live. We have another question that's about what's the main differences between the two and the three toed sloths? Oh, there's actually many differences from uh, their behavior to how they look. Um, one of the things is you can tell by their hair. The three fingered sloth has a much lighter, um, lighter fur, whereas the two fingered sloth has a thicker, thicker hair because they usually are found in all different elevations and require a warmer coat. Uh, they also have lack in uh, fingers. The two-fingered sloth only has two fingers, whereas the three-fingered sloth has three fingers and three toes. Their diets are different. The three-fingered sloth is strictly just a leaf eater, whereas the two-fingered sloth is a bit opp opp opportunistic, where they might eat um, some insects in the wild, things like that. Um, their behavior is much different. Two-fingered sloths are known for being much more aggressive and uh, much more difficult uh, to handle, for example, for our sloth team when we're treating them 
It requires many people because they have sharp teeth and sharp claws. Um, and, and the three-fingered sloth has sharp, sharp claws as well. Um, and those are just some. There's many, many differences with the two and three-fingered sloth. Great question. All right, I have a question from Jessica Shehab. How do you choose which sloth to compete? Well, that's a really, really good question. We usually try to pick a group of sloths that are in the same classroom. So these guys are all peers and they're all in sloth high school. We want to make sure that all of them kind of sim uh, they're similar in weight, they're similar um, in behavior in terms of uh, the transitioning from full-time care to uh, going outside and becoming more wild and it pretty much we want to make sure that they're progressing through the soft, uh, saving sloth to the, uh, saving sloth together program um, all at the same time. So we pick uh, pretty much peers in classrooms and make sure that the, it's a fair game essentially. So I have two questions. Uh, the first one is, what is the next step for all of these sloths, and how far away are they from going back into the wild? Really great question. So our Saving Sloths Together program takes about two years, and two years is about the maturity of a, of a sloth. Right now, these guys are all about a year or just under a year old, so they have about one more year before they can be released back into the wild. As I said before, they're all in high school, meaning that they're all living outside in an outdoor enclosure full time. They're completely independent with their diet. They're on a completely solid uh, leaf eating or uh, bean and carrot eating diet. We're also encouraging them to do foraging and things like that. And so um, they're in that sort of quick transition to when they're gonna be moved out to the release site. Once they're moved to the release site, they're about a year old or a little bit older, and there they're, in, they're introduced into a bigger enclosure. They're having to get used to the rainforest and the rainforest weather, um, and they're certainly just kind of given a little bit more isolation. And then from there, we put them in a massive uh, pre-release enclosure, and then we have a big sliding door that we connect to the rainforest canopy, and once they kind of tell us that they're ready to go, we'll soft release them, meaning that we'll slowly reintroduce them back into the wild. They can come back to the enclosure, eat the supplemental food that we provide them, and then we uh, slowly start taking that away, so that way they become a fully wild sloth. Great question. And the other question we had was, do two-toed sloths have tails? Two-toed sloths do not have tails. If they, if they do, but it's very, 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 very tiny. Am I right, Andreas? Yeah, just yes. very, very tiny. Just like our tail bone. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's asking why uh, do two toad sloths and three toad sloths get along well? They do not, actually, because the two fingered sloth is much more um, energetic, a lot more aggressive. We try not to put two fingered and three fingered sloths together. If we do, it's with some safe distance. You might find, actually, two fingered and three fingered sloth in the wild somewhere close in the canopy, but their diets usually, they like different leaves and things like that. So they don't really hang out a whole lot together in captivity or in the wild. All right, great. So let's introduce, finally, our second place finalist, the lovely, the only, <laughs> Three fingered sloth of the Sloth Iron Man Games, and that is lovely, lovely Eclipse. Laura is gonna bring us over some, or Anna is gonna oh. bring us over some lovely special treats for sweet Eclipse. Mm -hmm. I think she might really like yeah, the young, right? he might really like the young leaves. Someone's asking, do all release sloths receive tracking devices to monitor progress in wild? Very, very good question. No, they do not. Some of them receive a microchip so we can um, so we can make sure that, for example, if they were to be found in a dangerous situation or they were rescued again, we would be able to identify if they were a sloth that we cared for. Um, some we actually hard release, meaning that they came to us very wild and all we have to do is treat them, uh, heal them, and then release them straight back into the trees. Um, in cases like these guys, we try to fit them all with tracking collars for a little while, but we're trying to expedite our releases. So some will receive tracking collars just so we can 
um, see what they're doing and add to research, but some are just microchipped. Others are just released straight back into the wild. Eclipse here will probably be um, fitted with a tracking collar because we have only released a handful of three-fingered sloths back into the wild. And I just want to read off Eclipse's stats here. Eclipse certainly was also considered an underdog and definitely set pretty in third place most of the most of the games. In the one meter dash, he took third place with 75 points. In the high viscous eat off, he took third place with 75 points. In the strong sloth, took fourth place with, um, with 50 points. And then in the poop off, took again third place with 75 points. Pretty impressive Eclipse. We were really, really proud of you. Um, all together though, Eclipse smashed the, the board compared to the other three and raised $1,597.50. All together, uh, Eclipse finished with 1,872 points, and, well, and a half. Um, so we were really, really proud of Eclipse. And we were so impressed to see everybody who was rallying together and was Team Eclipse. It was definitely um, really, really exciting to watch. And very curious Eclipses today, just smelling around, wanting to probably escape. <laughs> Someone's asking, is it so far looking as if Eclipse and Luna will be released at the same time? Um, let me ask that to our vet supervisor, Anna. Maybe you can tell us who Luna is for people who don't know. Luna is another treated slot that we have here in the program. The whole plan would be um, to release them together since there's the similar age, although slots, three dot slots and two dot slots are not really social animals, but yeah, the whole plan will be for them to go out together and do the same, um, the same release place and probably stay on the same area for the, for the most time. I have a question as well. So mm -hmm. how long do slots live? Oh, yeah. Andres, you and want to answer that? I remember that. Yeah, so, one that fits with it first. Uh, how many types of species? How many species there are? So, so I can answer both of those yeah. questions. <laughs> it fits. <laughs> so there's actually um, four different species of three finger sloth. One in Costa Rica, and there's two species of two finger sloth. Uh, one in Costa Rica, and regarding how long do they get to live, uh, we don't really know. Uh, some of the books say that they will live around 25 years, but in reality, um, we truly do not know. Uh, it seems to be that it's much, much more longer than uh, much, much longer than that. And some sloths in captivity are over 40 years old, and they're still up and kicking. So um, I guess it's about to find out. So if there's any new sloth explorers out there that are willing to put in the hard work. That's one of the questions that we need answered right now. All right. Another question we have is how do sloths do with human interaction? I've heard that they're quite anxious. They are quite anxious. Um, sloths don't really make noises at all. So whenever you hear any sloth making any kind of noise from a growl to a, a high pitch um, cry, that means they're being anxious or angry or aggressive. So interaction with humans shouldn't be often. Here at the Toucan Rescue Ranch, we make sure that there's only a small group of people who are allowed to um, interact with the sloths, and that interaction is very minimal. It's taking them out to use the bathroom. It's taking them out for exercises. We always use buckets instead of holding them. That way uh, they feel comfortable and safe in their buckets and we're not interacting with them. Um, as much as possible and then of course for any sloth that's being uh, that's in the clinic we are sure to make sure that they um they're they have to be handled in the clinic obviously to receive treatment um but that is as quick as possible and um, we give them then their space so it's really really important to respect the animal and respect their space and know their behavior as well all right great well, i have a question oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> again um, do you have a limit to the numbers of sloths you have at once, or do you help all of the ones in need that you come across? Sorry, repeat that question again? Do you have a limit to the numbers of, of sloths you have at once, or do you help all of the ones in need that you come across? That's a really good question, and our founder Leslie hates to say no. So, um, 
I would say that we probably say yes to the majority of uh, rescues that we receive. And um, at one time, she could be caring for up to 10 orphan sloths, and, um, and we have a whole, a whole list of animals who are um, training to be released back into the wild or reinserted back into the wild. <laughs> Also, I have another question. It says, though sloths are usually solitary in the wild, do sloths race together and release together continue to stick with each other? That's a really, really good question. And you know what? Yes, they do. Uh, they don't necessarily stick together as like a, a pack of sloths, for example. But whenever they happen to cross each other's paths in the wild, they'll smell each other. They'll kiss each other, which is a sign of, aff uh, of affection with sloths. And then they'll say, hey, it was good to see you, Grumpy. It was good to see you, Eclipse. And then they'll go off because they are solitary animals in the wild. Uh, in other cases, if that was a sloth that they did not recognize the smell from or they didn't grow up with, they'll probably fight with them in the wild. And sloth fights are pretty intense. Um, so they, they definitely kind of, yeah, what's up? <laughs> and, then, uh, and then they carry on with, with what they're doing, whether that's finding food or going to the bathroom or whatever. All right, now, drum roll, please. Let's go meet our first place finalist. <laughs> Maybe just right in front of you. Yeah. Hey, girl. All right, everybody, this is oatmeal. We have a lot of, lot of oatmeal fans, huge oatmeal fans, um, and it definitely showed during these Sloth Ironman games. Oatmeal finished um, in third, no, excuse me, fourth place in the one meter dash, finished first in the hibiscus eat off, finished last in the strong sloth, and then finished second in the poop off. She did not disqualify in any of the games. She was a pretty, um, pretty solid contestant, pretty solid sloth fleet. What's super impressive, the, impressive about oatmeal though is that she raised $2,387.50. She finished with 2,687 points and a half. So we're pretty impressed with oatmeal and the amazing fans that all rallied together to raise money on her behalf. Uh, for those of you who may not know who Oatmeal is, she came in in uh, November of last year with severe electrocution. She was half the size that she is today, and our vet team was super worried and honestly didn't think that she would make it. But through, honestly, perseverance and strength and um, a lot of hard work on our vet team, vet team's behalf, she, she made it. She went through orthopedic surgery, she had bandages, she, she went through, through it all. And uh, we're super, super proud of Oatmeal and where she's come. Uh, and she finished first in the fifth annual Soft Ironman Games. So now she's showered with her favorite thing, the hibiscus flower. So if anybody has any questions about our finalists here, uh, I Oatmeal. I have a, a pretty funny one. Okay. So who is Oatmeal Slut's best friend? I don't know, Anna. Does she have a best friend? She had a best friend. Her name was Osa. Ah, oh, from Osa. Yeah. She had a, a, a orphan baby slot. I used to hang out with her. They were kind of mean to each other, but it, there was love in that. And they would <laughs> sleep together from time to time. But Osa got released. Osa is Osa back is into the wild. And um, Oatmeal also kind of likes Brad Pitt. Um, they kind of make out from time to time. Uh, they have a love-hate relationship, but they'll climb in the tree in the rehab area together and they're like, hey, what's up, Brad? Hey, what's up, Oatmeal? Um, and then carry on and, and take naps in the tree. We have another question that's, what times do the sloths usually wake up at? So the two-fingered sloth is considered nocturnal. So these guys are most active throughout the night and then they're supposed to be sleeping on and off throughout the day. You can see a, a two-fingered sloth cruising around during the day, but that's usually just to find some more yummy leaves or to find a better place to sleep. The three-fingered sloth is considered diurnal-ish, and you'll see them most active in the earlier parts of the day where it's not so hot and um, navigating through the canopy that way. So you'll see Eclipse more so in the daytime active, and you'll see oatmeal more active at night. 
And how old is oatmeal? Oatmeal is... It's probably a year old. Yeah, I think oatmeal's uh, at least a year old, if not a few, a year and a few months. So she's actually reaching that point where she would be transferred to the release site where we would continue her training to be put back into the wild. Which is so amazing, guys. Like, I, I am so impressed with her progress. You guys see her now with full hair, but she used to not have any hair on her tummy. She had like a Buddha belly. And you can even still see some of the hair missing from under her chin. And that's from the electrocution. Any other questions about the Sloth Ironman games, about oatmeal, or just about Toucan Rescue Ranch in general? Yeah, um, there's one. Um, how many permanent sloths do you have that can't ever be released? How That's a really good question. So um, there's a few, um, let's say, dropouts <laughs> in, in the Saving Sloths Together program, meaning that we tried to release them, but they showed us uh, really not great behaviors, um, so we had to bring them back, and they're considered um, a part of the sanctuary of Toucan Rescue Ranch. One of those would be Latte. Latte was put through the release program, was in the wild, but just continued to get hurt or show really strange behavior, and she prefers a bucket over a tree, and so we had to bring her back, and she's considered a resident. Um, we have some sloths that have been here for a very long time and that were originally raised by Leslie whenever all the science told us that releasing a hand-raised sloth was not possible. Um, since then, we've obviously proved that wrong. Um, so Millie and Milo are considered permanent residents, but actually we're really excited to say that Hannah and Ellie, who were here yeah. as older residents, um, were recently released. Actually, in the last two years, they've had babies in the wild and we've actually relocated them to um, a permanent refuge away from from our release site. So I think all sloths are considered releasable until they tell us that they're not. And then there's a few very select sloths that have been with us for so, so, so long that we, we're going to provide them sanctuary for the rest of their lives. Sorry, Anna was telling me, what, what was that, Anna? Stella. She was on a uh, resident and got released recently. Yes, so Stella, she's another example. Actually, some people in our following might have met Stella during a tour, but she has a pretty incredible story. She was um, found in someone's trunk. Um, they had stolen her from the wild and ripped her from a tree, and she was... Um, she was limp from the waist down. So our founder, Leslie, did uh, physical therapy with her every single day and she learned how to climb and she was a really healthy female and she recently was put back into the wild and she's become a mom. So um, we have a lot of really amazing stories like that. Any other questions out there? I have a couple. Okay. So actually just one. Will oatmeal chin hair grow back? I think so. I think with time it will definitely grow back. Um, the rest of her hair has grown back and she might have some scars where it's not able to, but I think eventually it will. We'll, and, we'll find out. And baby sloths cry, but do they ever vocalize as adults? What kind of sounds do they make? Oh, you're going to make me say this on camera, huh? Who's this? <laughs> this is Gunter the penguin. Oh, Gunter. <laughs> yes, sloths <laughs> vocalize. Um, so three-fingered sloths, for example, when they are in heat, the female will make a very high-pitched <laughs> and that's pretty much like, come and find me, I'm ready! And the, the male will pretty much traverse through the entire forest to find this female who's, who's making this mating call. And there's usually intervals of 30 minutes that she does that. Um, and it, it's loud. It's very loud. Actually, on our YouTube channel, you can find uh, three-fingered sloth making that mating sound and there he goes and sometimes there's a battle to the who wins the woman and um, the males will fight and um, yeah essentially will whoever's the strongest will win the female um, with two-fingered sloths Andreas do they, they do they make a mating call they do not make a mating call but they do scream a lot uh, when they're angry mm -hmm. so when two male sloths find each other uh, they'll usually fight and they fight really, really, really hard. It's one of the hardest battles in nature. And they'll <laughs> growl like an alligator deep in their throat. And they'll buff and huff and sigh very deeply as well. Like, <laughs> Oh, Neil's falling asleep. She's exhausted from all her hibiscus flowers. <laughs> I think maybe one last question. All right, Instagram, what do we got? 
Will all these slots be released? Yes, all of them are in our release program and all of them will be put back into the trees. Wonderful question. It will take a, it will take time. Our soft release program, like I said, takes it's about a two year program. Um, and we have a lot of sloths who are eager to get back into the trees. So we have a bit of a backlog of those that are releasable. Um, but yes, to answer your question, all these guys will be back in the wild. And that is part of the beauty of the Sloth Ironman Games. And just to wrap this all up, um, the Sloth Ironman Games is an initiative that I created five years ago in celebration of International Sloth Day. Um, it's a way for you guys to get excited and to learn about sloths and sloth conservation. We're really excited to have the Sloth Institute join us every year and do the funny commentary that I'm sure you all really, really enjoyed. They're a, re a research and rescue site based in Manuel Antonio, and they've taught us a lot of the things that we now know about releasing sloths and the research that it takes to get these guys safely back into the wild. Um, so it's been really exciting to have this friendship with the Sloth Institute. And the money that you guys raised, which we smashed our goal, we wanted to raise 3000 but you helped us raise over seven thousand dollars and all of this money will help us put these guys back into the wild will allow us to provide medical treatment provide um, enrichment provide all the things that we need necessary to put them back into the trees and make sure that they have a smooth and healthy transition doing that so it's because of you guys that we're able to do the work and to help the animals that you have all grown to love and adore so thank you so much for making this year so much fun it's been honestly a, a blast. Me and Mariana, we're exhausted. It's been a lot of work, but it's been totally worth it. And we hope that you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. So thank you so, 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 so much. Any other questions? All right. Thank you so much. Have a lovely sauce Sunday and we'll see you later.